Hi, I'm Rachel with Patterns in Pixels Canada and on today's video I continue working on my curved seams quilt. Today I get all of my blocks cut and up on the design wall. Let's get started. ago now I started working on a curved piecing quilt. I then put it aside <laughs> in a drawer um, because I didn't know what to do with it. I will link to the uh, video I did previously but just as a quick summary I went on a course to learn how to do curved piecing and ended up with these giant blocks. And the point of the course was to learn how to do the curved piecing. It wasn't to do anything with these. And so the instructor had said to us, well, just stitch them together as they are and make a nice big quilt. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I like the curved piecing. I don't like the way the blocks look. And so I toyed with a few different ideas of what to do with them and then put them aside and worked on other projects while I was thinking about it. I've, sort of doodled a few different designs in my sketchbook and I think I'm going to do something along this line um, something modern no sashing no borders just quite literally sewing these pieces together I have picked up some fairly neutral fabrics to complement them but before I can get into into what I'm going to do with these fabrics. I really need to focus on these larger blocks. I had toyed with the idea of cutting the blocks because I, I just feel they're too big. I don't like the way they look with such giant pieces if I were to just come along and sew them together like this. It would be fine, but it just doesn't appeal to me. So I have decided I'm going to cut them because I hadn't planned on cutting them when I first made them, I haven't used a short stitch, which really you should if you're going to be cutting over seams. So I'm, I know in the back of my mind, there might be a few seams I have to sort of fix because <laughs> they might unravel a little bit. What I've done to try and help the situation is I have best pressed all of this fabric. It's made it a little bit stiffer, which I'm hoping will help keep everything together. And because I've done that to this fabric, I've also done it to the new fabric that I purchased. So that way everything is as best as possible, starting at the same point. I think what I'm going to do now is look at the um, fabrics here, the, the, the pattern, and I'm going to get all of the corresponding pieces together. This was one of those workshops where you, you do it one way, and then you turn it and they all end up being uh, the same curve, just with different fabrics. So those ones have the same curve, just different fabric. And I think what I want to do is get those all together so that when I come to cut these, they will all be cut the same. I'm sure it's not something that You'd notice once I get the quilt put together, but I don't know for sure. You. Ah. Then I've um, measured all of my blocks and I think I will be able to get four eight inch square blocks out of each one, which is going to leave me with 64 eight inch blocks that I can then work into the design, hopefully, that I've come up with. Okay, there we have it. I think I'm going to leave them in this orientation 
I like all the seams are all going off in the same direction. So that's the way I'm going to cut them. I'll start with this one. So let's pop these ones off to the side. Now I had already trimmed all these blocks down previously. Uh, I'm sorry, squared them up. But like I said, they've been in storage for a couple of weeks. And then best pressed and then ironed and all this sort of whatnot. So I'm going to just make sure I'm starting with the straight edge. Yeah, I can go a bit, a little bit wonky. Let me give myself a straight edge to start. I don't want to take off too much because I do want to make sure I can get four blocks out. So that's now my straight edge. And of course, when I'm cutting, I'm not looking at the grid line on the map. I'm looking at the grid line on here. I'm matching up my eight inch on this side. So from that line to here is eight inches. I'm not worried about the top or the bottom right now. That will be trimmed later. All I'm doing is making sure that <laughs> it's one thing to say that you're going to cut them. It's a very different thing when you come to doing it. Okay. Eight inch square blocks out of each of these, four of them to make this. Oh, I sincerely hope this is not going to be a mistake. <laughs> Whew, okay. Okay, that one's done. Now this one will just need a little bit of trimming. So I'm matching up the eight inch line on this side. I feel like I've done it now. <laughs> so it's gonna have to work. There's the 8 inch on that side. In other circumstances, like so when I come to cut this fabric, I can do it in bulk. Because these are unique pieces, I feel more comfortable cutting them one at a time. This time when I'm measuring to, to trim, I'm looking at the top and the bottom line, because those are my straight lines now. I'm getting myself a straight edge to start with. So now we'll do eight inches again. And now I have three edges that are straight. So I'm looking at all three lines. There we go. There's one eight inch block. Let's see if this one needs any trimming. Yes, it does. I'm looking at my three lines again. So that's a <laughs> two. <laughs> I'll cut that one as well, and of course all the other ones. You know what, I think I made the right decision. I'm not already, I like the look of that. It feels more manageable. And I like that some of them are going to have two and some of them are going to have three. And then of course when it comes to putting them together, I might keep seams the same, or I might, I don't know. Yes, I think, I think this is, I think this is going to work much better. Um, as I was saying, cutting this fabric, I'll be able to do it in bulk, uh, getting quite a few squares at a time. When it comes to cutting these, they're all just a little bit off and I'm being so careful um, to make sure that I can get four out of each one. So I think I am going to have to cut them one at a time, very slowly, until I have 64 blocks, um, which will take me a while, but then cutting this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, once that's finished, let's see if I can move mom's quilt off the display board so I can start putting mine up. Uh, she was working on the same charm quilt that I recorded a few weeks ago. I can link that below so you can see it. And uh, she's working on designing her backing now. She's decided to applique some pieces. Uh, they're just pinned there though, so if I take this off and move it, they'll come down and she'll get mad at me. So 
<laughs> so I need to wait for her to finish and move that so I can get mine up on the quilt. Hard having two filters in one house, isn't it? All right, let me carry on with this and uh, I will get back to you once I have my blocks cut. Got all the blocks cut that used to be larger <laughs> curved pieces. I love them. I think this size is going to be exactly what I need. For right now, I'm going to keep them in my basket. This is how I'm organizing my projects right now in my um, cabinet. I'm not saying it's going to be how I do things forever, but it's how I do things right now. In terms of cutting this, these larger pieces of fabric, the plan that I've come up with, I want to have sort of larger bands of these colors to go with the blocks. However, I'm new to quilting. I'm not entirely sure that what I've put here is exactly what I'm going to come up with. And I'm not confident that I would be able to cut these longer strips perfectly the way I want them. And then once I've cut it, of course, I can't make any changes. So what I've decided to do is to cut all of this fabric into eight inch blocks as well. That way I can piece them together like a puzzle on the board. And yes, I'll end up having the same colors beside each other and give the illusion that it's cut as one strip, but it'll be done in blocks instead. I've already best pressed and then pressed all of this fabric. And when you get fabric like this straight off the bolt, I know some people are tempted to open it up and press out the seam that comes or the crease that comes from the bolt, but you don't have to. I'm not going to be using the fabric that's here. And if for whatever reason I had to use the fabric that was there, then I could open it up and press it. Right now, all I need to do is make myself an edge to start with. So I'm lining up against that crease at the bottom. And yes, perhaps it came off of the bolt and it wasn't perfectly straight, but that's fine. I'm straightening it up now. And there's no point in trying to open this up and get my salvage ends to meet up with each other because they might not be straight. So I'm not gonna fuss with it. I'm just going to make myself a cut edge right now, making sure that I am catching both folds of the fabric. Down, move my hand, keeping the blade down while I go. Okay, now I've got a straight edge to work with. And because I'm right-handed, I want that straight edge to be on the left. There we go. I'm doing eight inch blocks. So all I'm going to do now is work my way along, cutting eight inch strips. I'm lining up straight against my fold at the bottom and then straight against the cut I have just made at the eight inch point. Keeping the blade down if I have to move my hand. And then I can just move along. Once I have all my strips cut, then I can come the other direction and turn them into blocks. I find with practice, I'm able to cut about four folds of fabric at a time. Also helps if you have a very fresh blade. Oh, I should have taken that off. So normally I would keep going, but just to show you, I would be more, more than comfortable doing this. I know these two edges are straight because I just cut them. So I butt them up against each other. Now I'm going to cut my salvage ends off, making sure I get both sides under there. Okay, I'm straight across the bottom. I'm straight on my center line here, straight along the top, straight, 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 straight. Fabulous. 
Now, if you have a strip ruler, that would be ideal at this point, but I do not have one. So I'm turning it around. Everybody is matched up nice and happy. Straight at the bottom, straight on my left side, my cut edge. Okay. Now I could also do these on top of each other. I could put the fabric on top, but since I'm doing just fine with it like this, I am happy to continue like this. So I'm now going to continue with the remainder of this sort of pastel -y pink and then I've got another exact same print but in a soft green and then the last one is in kind of a creamy beige color. So I'm going to get all those blocks cut to go with the curved pieces and then I can start getting work on the design board. I have all of my eight inch squares cut. There are 168 of them. I'm going to start getting them up onto the design board, roughly following the grid that I, or the plan pattern design that I sort of sketched out onto a piece of graph paper or gridded paper. Um, I'm going to initially start with doing a, a 12 by 14 uh, block pattern, but I reserve the right to move things around as I get them up onto the board. Let's get started. near finished. I've got a few points to make as to why I'm stopping here, but I do need to stop and like step back from it and take a bit of a break. First point I'd like to make. I still have quite a few of my curved pieces left and I do want to get all of my curved pieces up on the board. I'm not too bothered about any of the plain pieces I have left. I already have in the back of my mind that they might be incorporated into the binding or the backing of the quilt but the curved pieces must make it on the front. In terms of what I've put up here, I have just put them up without any thought. So I can already tell looking at this that I've got too many of the similar pieces together. So down here, these blocks are all very similar. These ones are all similar. I'd like to rearrange them a little bit. I also need to decide if I want my curved seams all going the same direction or if I'm going to have some going another way so there'll be a little bit of turning that has to happen. I haven't quite decided what I want to do there. I've also noted some of my blocks have ended up with uh, big sections of one type of fabric. So this one here has a big section of pink. Well that's right beside my solid pinks so he needs to be moved. I don't like them being that close together. And there was another one this one, big section of cream, I don't mind it being here so much because it's near the green, so it doesn't stand out quite as much. Something else I've noted, I've ended up on this side with a lot of my solid fabric. That might be a good place for me to rearrange a little bit to get some of my curved pieces up there. So there's just little tweaks like that that need to happen. The other thing I'm going to do once I'm finished filming is I'm actually going to take a picture of this. I always do that anyway. Every time you're doing a quilt, every time you move something, take a picture. But I'm going to take a picture and edit it to grayscale because I want to see the value. I want to see my lights and my darks. 
I'm a little suspicious with these darker blues here, how they're going to be turning up in this quilt as compared to like this section up here with all the pink and the white, it might not be as balanced as I'd like it to be. So those sorts of tweaks need to happen. But I also just need to have this up on the board for a couple of days where I can sit down and just look at it. The general pattern has worked the way I want it. I want it to have, um, I'm gonna call them pathways. A pathway that would go through the quilt and then maybe one that gets cut off. I did want to have that. I wanted this to be very random. I could have used my squares and done a checkerboard or sort of a, a dartboard or a spiral. I could have made a very specific pattern, but I didn't want that. I wanted it to look very random. I sort of had in my mind um, like a trickling stream or a, a stone pathway through a garden that just sort of follows the natural lay of the land. That's kind of what I had pictured in my mind as I was designing this. And I think that part I have achieved. The next part of the quilt won't happen for a while because I need time, I need time to think about it and to be really happy with it before I sew it together. Because once I've sewn it together, <laughs> I'm not changing it. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave this here. Um, at this point, you know what to do. If you've enjoyed watching this video and you'd like to see some more that I'm working on, hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification. Bye.